Encoding Decoding by Stuart Hall. The encoding decoding model of communication was first developed by cultural studies scholar Stuart Hall in 1973. He discussed this model of communication in an essay entitled Encoding and Decoding in the Television Discourse. Hall's essay offers a theoretical approach of how media messages are produced, disseminated, and interpreted. His model claims that TV and other media audiences are presented with messages that are decoded or interpreted in different ways depending on an individual's cultural background, economic standing, and personal experiences. This work by Hall brought a revolution in mass media research on communication. The earlier research was dogged by the traditional communication circuit which recognized only two stages. Stage 1 – The sender sends the message. Stage 2 – The receiver receives the message. This model of communication was very much linear, where the message flowed from one side to the other, from sender to receiver. Hall identified a complex structure involved in message production and its reception. The traditional communication theory took the audience for granted. It considered the audience as passive. But Stuart Hall brought to notice the active role of audience by focusing upon the complex process of encoding and decoding. In his essay, Hall proposed four-stage theory of communication in which he identified the following stages. Production, circulation, use that is consumption and reproduction. Production is where the encoding of a message takes place. By drawing upon society's dominant ideologies, the creator of the message is feeding off of society's beliefs and values. Circulation is the subtle manner in which a message is transmitted. How things are circulated influences how audience members will receive the message and put it to use. Use or consumption or understanding. This is the decoding or interpreting of a message which requires active recipients. This is a complex process of understanding for the audience. Reproduction. This is the stage after audience members have interpreted the message in their own way based on their experiences and beliefs. What is the reaction after consuming the message is the stage of reproduction. Hall says each of these stages is relatively autonomous from the other. He meant to say that each of these steps is autonomous at the same time logically interdependent in the chain. According to him, each stage has its own determining limits and possibilities. Hall says there is no random interpretation at any stage because each stage limits the possibilities in the next. Hall perceived a complex structure of dominance in messages. This structure of dominance varies at each stage. First, the institutional structures of broadcasting with their practices and networks of production, their organized relations and technical infrastructures are required to produce program. Production here constructs the message. Thus, the circuit begins here. The production process has its discursive aspect. It molds the message in a presentable form. Further, the production structures draw the message from the other discursive formations created by wider socio-cultural and political power structures like language, dominant culture, ideology, etc. After drawing on these discursive formations, available knowledge in society, the message is ideologically circulated in a presentable and acceptable manner. At the stage of production, message is appropriated as per the technical needs and at the stage of circulation, it is appropriated as per the socio-economic and language power relations. The message is given a presentable shape a message form.
the message form becomes the vehicle of the intended message before it is put to use or consumption the message is appropriated as a meaningful discourse so that it is meaningfully decoded at the stage of use the audience can decode the message as per their socio economic and political background the audience might have differing socio economic and political background as the background differs the decoding also differs it is this set of decoded meanings which have an effect with very complex perceptual cognitive emotional ideological or behavioral consequences in a determinate moment the power relations encode a message at another determinate moment the message via its decodings comes into social practice and acquires social use value or political effectivity as the message is discursively produced circulated and used or consumed there arise distortions or misunderstandings as the encoded message is not decoded in a desired way there is a kind of non identity or lack of equivalence between encoding and decoding at both the ends message is produced differently at one end producers create a message at one at another reader or audience creates a meaning thus encoding and decoding both are creative moments according to stuart hall reader or audience is also equally important here hall identifies three positions from where the audience or reader might decode the message one dominant position two negotiated position three oppositional position dominant or hegemonic position this position is one where the consumer takes the actual meaning directly and decodes it exactly the way it is encoded the consumer operates within the dominant point of view and fully shares the codes of the text and accepts and reproduces the intended meaning here there is barely any misunderstanding because both the sender and receiver have the same cultural biases this is the ideal typical case of perfectly transparent communication negotiated position this position is a mixture of accepting and rejecting elements as hall states caught decoding within the negotiated version contains a mixture of adaptive and oppositional elements uncaught reader acknowledges the dominant message but do not accept everything the way the encoder intended the reader to a certain extent shares the text codes and generally accepts the preferred meaning but simultaneously also resists and modifies the message in a way which reflects his or her own experiences and interests negotiated codes operate through what we might call particular or situated logics to explain it hall gives example of a worker's response to industrial relations bill which intended to limit the right to strike or to argue for a wages freeze a worker may have a negotiated reading here considering the national interest and economic debate the decoder may adopt the hegemonic definition may agree for less payment but at the same time may oppose the stern standpoint of the government to curtail their freedom to go on strike for better pay and conditions oppositional position in this position a consumer understands the literal meaning but due to different backgrounds each individual has his own way of decoding messages while forming his own interpretations gets exactly the opposite of the intended meaning here continuing with the same example of industrial relations bill a group may take opposite stand and may read every mention of the national interests as class interest he or she is operating with what we must call an oppositional code the reader or viewer 
detotalizes the message in the preferred chord in order to retotalize the message within some alternative framework of reference. Hall says reality exists outside the language due to this fact. There is no intelligible discourse without the operation of a chord. Iconic signs or visual signs are also corded signs. Association between the image and the meaning is not natural, it is the part of convention. But this convention achieves universality or naturalness. This has the ideological effect of concealing the practices of coding which are present. Thus, the audience comes to naturally accept the television signs. Hall says we must remain conscious about the appearance of the coded message. So, it is at the connotative level of the sign, the situational ideologies alter and transform signification. At this level, we can see more clearly the active intervention of ideologies in and on discourse. Here, the sign is open to new accentuations or interpretations. Already, coded signs intersect with the deep semantic codes of a culture and take on additional, more active ideological dimensions. The message every time does not work out as per the prearranged codes or encoding. The ideal of the broadcasters is to have perfectly transparent communication. Instead, what they have to confront is systematically distorted communication. According to Stuart Hall, there will always be private, individual and variant readings.